People talk about when they play that zone of theirs, but they've become a very good man to man team. They've done a lot more of it recently as well as we check out the starters for the Yellow Jackets and man how many times did we hear Josh Pastner say the word guards when we spoke with him this morning. Now when you get two of the best around uh, you're going to talk about your guards. They're hoping to get Mike DeVoe going here he is zero in blue working on Hemingway with the shot clock winding down that's a tough one for DeVoe and a good start for him. And that's a really good sign for Georgia Tech DeVoe. He shoots the ball very well from three but I think he can be really good in that lane area. He has that ability to fall away and shoot that little jump shot. Junior from Orlando who averages 13 and a half points per game for the Yellow Jackets. Honor throws it down low for Sims who got the roll. <laughs> he got the roll to bounce everything else. I thought Honor waited a little bit too long but Sims with a nice catch and finish. Here's the always well caffeinated Jordan Usher who spun away and couldn't hit it. And each of these teams is going to be looking to get back on defense. You do not want to give up any easy baskets. Oh good recovery by Usher and then Alex Hemingway had a hard fall. Still feeling it. Now he wasn't able to break that fall at all and. You talked about Jordan Usher. He is definitely an energy guy. He is go, go, go. This is really a nice play. He really tracks his man really effectively. You know, lots of times you commit a foul there, but he tracks him and, you know, Hemingway actually hung on the rim. That's what his problem was. <laughs> Glad he's okay, though. Yeah, he reached out for something there to break the fall as Sims misses the shot. Slow start offensively for Clemson. Here is Jose Alvarado with it. One of the best point guards in the entire country. Good denial by Clemson defensively on the back door bit. Trap is an outstanding defender and he knocked that one away. When you talk Alvarado. about outstanding defenders Alvarado is all <laughs> over honor. Honor got by him though to the cup. To tie us up at four. Well, Honor, you can just look at him. He's five feet ten, but he weighs 205 pounds, and he just used his physical presence to get past Alvarado. That wasn't quickness, that was just physical power. Parham looking for somewhere to go. Jordan Usher's got to get back in bounds. <laughs> yeah, what's Usher doing? <laughs> Usher spinning and scoring as he did get back in bounds. Well, he stood there on the sea for the longest time, and Parham's looking at him, telling him, hey, get back in bounds so I can throw you the ball. Yeah, he's chatting up the officials. DeVoe took it away from Hunter Tyson. And a foul on the floor on the DeVoe drive. Sean, thank you. We welcome you to Little John Coliseum. We are four minutes into an excellent game, a special edition, some Friday night hoops here in South Carolina. Georgia Tech and Clemson, two teams in the top half of the ACC, a really important game. Dan Bonner, Mike Monaco, our entire crew with you. Slow offensive start in this one, Dan, as both teams feeling each other out. Well, not really surprising. Clemson's an outstanding defensive team, but there's Michael DeVoe. That's two tough baskets early, and that is a great sign for Georgia Tech. He really struggled offensively against Virginia. Yeah, he only had two points. He's got four already. That was an eight-point loss on Wednesday for Georgia Tech to the number nine team in the country. As Amir Sims had it pried away, and the ball belongs to Georgia Tech. Uh, snow down here last weekend made for some beautiful sights as we welcome you back to Little John Coliseum. Second meeting between these teams in the last month. This was the first. Dan Bonner, Georgia Tech hit 16 threes in that ball game. Yeah, he hit 16 threes. You're generally going to have success. Each team <laughs> shot the ball pretty well, 
But the Clemson Tigers, they turned it over 20 times, and Josh Passner's guys were able to turn those 20 turnovers into 30 points, and that was decisive. Now, Josh there, I really think that that's classic. He's wearing that face shield, and thank heavens that it's labeled face shield so we know what it is. You know, had that it not, that label not been on there, I thought it would have been, you know, like a pair of vice grips or something. Yeah, so Howard thank goodness we know it's a face shield. It's kind of like the, the John Belushi college sweatshirt in Animal House. Like, it's just aptly labeled for Josh Pastner rocking that all season for Georgia Tech. They're up by four here on the road in the first five minutes at Clemson. Dan, I know you were looking to key in on this matchup. That was Moses Wright spinning against Amir Sims, and now it's DeVoe on the drive and right on the follow. One of the things that Clemson has to do is to keep Georgia Tech out of the lane because when they can get penetration, Sims has to come and help, and Moses Wright does a great job following the ball and tracking it to the basket for an offensive rebound. Sims trying to stretch right out, and Sims knocks it down. The senior from Virginia who averages 12 and a half a game and hit 1,000 for his career in the win Saturday against Syracuse. That's a big basket for Clemson. In fact, in ACC play, there's only three people on the team that are shooting better than 30% from beyond the three-point arc, and Sims isn't one of them. And then That's Sims walled up. Yeah, Moses Wright in the paint. You mentioned the three-point shooting for Clemson. The last two games coming in, they've looked a lot like the team they were earlier this season as they turn it over there. But they've shot it well the last two games in the wins against North Carolina and then the Syracuse victory last weekend. Sims picks up the foul, and here's what happens when right down, when DeVoe drives to the baskets. He's surrounded by white shirts, but nobody's paying any attention, any attention to Moses Wright, who slips in and gets the easy follow. Bubba Parham off the baseline, out of bounds from Jordan Usher. Yeah, Parham is generously listed at five feet ten, but he slipped inside. He only had one point in the first meeting that we showed you between these two teams, but he took about four or five charges. He kept taking them in the second half. He had a really big impact on that game, even without scoring. Well, that's good hands by Moses Wright. He knocked the He's ball away and forced Sims another four feet from the basket, and he paid for that four oh, feet. Yeah. That's great defense. Poked it away, then he got the block and causing trouble for Amir Sims early on. This is what you're talking about, Mike, that Clemson started the season very, very well. And then they had that three-game losing streak where they, and that was coming out of their COVID pause where they got blasted. But there you can see in three of the last four games, they've won and they've done it with their defense. And Brad Brown now knows that his team is no offensive juggernaut, but they can guard the heck out of you, and that's what they need to do. And right away, and on cue, they force a Jose Alvarado turnover. Georgia Tech would like to push it because they don't want to let that Clemson defense get set. We're talking about the Clemson defense coming into the weekend. They ranked 12th in the country, according to Ken Palm, in adjusted defensive efficiency. Just one of the very best defensive groups in the entire country. Trap gave it up, and there's another one from the outside that drops. And this time, it's Olivier Maxence Prosper, just his third three of the season for the freshman from Montreal. Yeah, and coming into the game, he was one for nine in ACC play from beyond the three-point arc. And then Trap fouled the three-point shooter in Parham at the other end of the floor. Hey, tomorrow, 2 Eastern, it's Boston College in Syracuse right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Syracuse coming off a Tuesday victory over NC State. Got 22 from Alan Griffin in that one. Dan, we said it right when we came on the air. This is a matchup between two teams in the top half of the ACC. And a really big one for Georgia Tech because this would be a quad one victory for the Yellow Jackets. 
as they sit at five and five in the ACC. And then for Clemson they want to continue the success that they had last week against Carolina and Q's. Well, Clemson they're sitting a little bit better because they have some big early season wins and Georgia Tech doesn't have that. Georgia Tech lost those two games early in the season one to Georgia State and the other to Mercer. And so that has really hurt them. So again you said they're looking for a quad one win and this would be that would be such a win and that would be very very beneficial to the Yellow Jackets. On the outside looking in right now in the NCAA tournament picture according to Joey Brackets who's got Clemson as of his latest update today as an eight seed taken away from Alamir Dawes and here's DeVoe with the handle and nearly the finish as well he will go to the free throw line. It's much harder to play defense when you're chasing the guys and you're looking at the names on the back of their jerseys rather than <laughs> the team name on the front of the jerseys. And that was the problem for the Clemson Tigers in the first game. We said they had 20 turnovers already. In tonight's game, they have six. And so what would you like to see from them, Dan, against Georgia Tech? There's so much talk about Georgia Tech's changing defenses and sometimes how hard it is to, to figure out exactly what defense the Yellow Jackets are in. Well, they've been in man-to-man -man this entire game, so it hasn't been any mystery. Clemson needs to do a better job moving the ball and moving personnel. The ball, the ball is sticking in people's hands, and there's another turnover. And in transition, DeVoe left it short. He has been very active early on for Georgia Tech. Feeling good in the early going. Alvarado. Can't get it to go and a good battle on the boards and then last touched by Clyde Trapp. Good effort from Rodney Howard getting some first half minutes. Georgia Tech leading by seven on the road. Yeah, that was Jose Alvarado on Packer and Durham earlier this week talking about his defense and yeah everyone does know who he is defensively. He's top three in the country in steals per game and that's what he did last time when these teams met in January. Well he might not steal the ball every time but certainly that thoughts in your mind. This guy is a tremendous competitor. He just gets after you and he gets after it on the offensive end of the court as well. His pressure and Georgia Tech's pressure overall has forced Clemson into eight turnovers already. Mike DeVoe himself has three steals of Clemson. Shot clock's winding down and Bubba Parham did get it off but left it short in a shot clock violation. On the offensive end Clemson needs better ball movement and better player movement. There's a little too much dribbling. And unless you're taking the ball and driving it to the basket when you're dribbling you're pretty easy to guard there Newman takes the ball and attacks the basket. There's a resume for Josh Pastner in his fifth season at the helm and we told you nine and seven overall five and five in the ACC and at the start of the weekend in a three way tie for seventh in the conference and right now on the outside looking in according to the bracketology projections. Let's see if there's some better movement here from Clemson on this possession. They got it to Alamir Dawes curling into the key. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Really good movement off the ball. Now you got to dig in defensively. Chase Hunter is up on Bubba Parham. Parham beat him off the bounce. Extra pass for Alvarado. He's missed a couple early on. And interestingly enough, after making 16 threes in that first game, Georgia Tech hadn't made any here in the first 10 minutes of this one. And yeah, those 16 were one off a program record. We were kind of dissecting them this morning with Brad Brownell, and he said they got them in a lot of different scenarios, but they got a few in transition. And I know that's a spot, Dan, where you think Georgia Tech, as they get out and run here, indeed, that's where they're dangerous. 
stays with Georgia Tech. It's really a nice job by Hunter. 11th year for Brad Brownell, and he had this group as high as 12th in the country. And the non-conference resume is so impressive, and it's gotten more impressive because of how good Alabama's been as the season has gone on, and Purdue is also a ranked team right now as well. And any more that that's what you have to do. You can you can do a, a great favor to yourself if you have success early in the season in the non-conference part of the season. And if you don't, then you're fighting uphill the rest of the year. And these two are two contrasting teams. Clemson had that success. Georgia Tech did not. Moses Wright turns it over. Middle of February, so yeah, bracketology time. The overall record 12 and 5, and such a great start to the season. Nine wins in the first 10 games, and some of those big wins that we talked about shown at the bottom there. Well, 6 and 0 in non conference play that win over Alabama. Alabama is rated number 10 in the NCAA evaluation tool, the net. There's a foul against Moses Wright. Purdue is 24. So those are wins that are looking very, very big right now. And in addition to that, Clemson beat a Maryland team that a lot of people, Joey Brackett's included, are talking about being just very close to making the NCAA tournament. And because of all that, Clemson has a net of 48 right now. So as we look at Georgia Tech's resume, this for them on the road would be a quad one victory as things stand right now. Sims got blocked by Moses right underneath. Sims was a little too slow with that move. He had right off balance to start, but he gave right time to recover. Well, Moses right then just went over the back, so on consecutive possessions, he just picked up two fouls after this block. Uh, he did a nice job recovering there. Sims had a little bit of room. Sims thought that was a goal 10, but you're right. Then down on the other end, Moses right, a little bit excited. Goes over the back and picks up his second foul, and that is a, that can be a huge factor for Georgia Tech. Yeah, for as deep as Clemson is, we know Georgia Tech does not go deep into the bench, although Josh Passner very willing to let guys stay in in the first half with two fouls. He leads the country in that regard, year in and year out. John Newman with the bucket inside the paint. Quickly back the other way, it is Jordan Usher with the slam. That's really a nice job by Georgia Tech to take the ball out of the basket and push it down the court. Quick first step from Sims, who gets the roll, plus the foul and a chance at three. And it is three fouls on Moses Wright. Well, that is one heck of a move by Amir Sims. Sims is a guy, he can shoot the three and he can take you outside and Moses Wright just does not react very quickly. You know, I think if Amir Sims has the ball out there, you play off of him and you make him beat you by shooting a three. Dan, that was 60 seconds of game action during which Moses Wright just picked up all three of his fouls. Now Georgia Tech had been playing a small lineup and now they get even smaller. Usher and Khalid Moore are the biggest guys out there for the Jackets. Now Clemson is not a team with a lot of size either. Sims is the biggest guy. He's there on Moore. Shot clock is winding down. Alvarado jacks it and hits it. That's the first basket for Jose Alvarado. But how many times have you seen him make a shot like that? <laughs> he is a big shot maker. You saw 17 and a half points per game. Top three in the ACC as Newman misses. And here comes Georgia Tech ahead by five. Seven and a half to go here in the first half at Clemson.
Offensive foul on Moore. Excellent defense from John Newman the third. But it's Georgia Tech leading by five on the road and running. Jordan Usher, let it burn. Starts at noon with Wake Forest and Clemson. We saw Amanda Butler's team out here on the floor earlier this afternoon. Then in Tallahassee, it's Miami and Florida State. So just over seven to go here in the first half, and Moses Wright with three fouls that he picked up all of them in a one-minute span. And, Dan, we were talking about this earlier. The first time these teams met, Moses Wright had 17 in the first half and got off to such a great start. Well, he had four dunks in that first half. He made two threes, but... I can tell you from experience, it's hard to score from the place he's sitting now. Yeah. As Nick Otter comes out of the timeout with an elbow jumper, and he'd been quiet so far because he's seeing a lot of Jose Alvarado. Uh, Alvarado's really getting after him. That is a very interesting matchup, but Nick Otter's not trying to force anything so far. Got to pick your spots when you're playing against a defender as good as Alvarado. And honor to his credit, he's done a very nice job sticking with Alvarado at this end of the floor. Newman clears the miss from Moore. And Moore's a guy I think Clemson is comfortable shooting that three. Alvarado's in some pain for Georgia Tech up top. As we'll get a held ball, the arrow does keep it at this end with Clemson. And Alvarado, much like the first game between these teams, when he rolled his right ankle, he's going to head off to the sideline here. Let's see if we can see what happened to Alvarado. He's coming around that screen. Oh, I think he just got hit. He caught a knee in the thigh as he was trying to come over that screen. So Moses right in foul trouble. And Jose He's Alvarado icing his left hurt. knee. And yeah, Alvarado went right out toward the tunnel. Mark it down at the, the 618 mark here with Clemson with it down by three. Clyde Trapp on the drive, missed it from a tough angle. Usher. Nice step through. Boy, Usher, particularly in transition, has the ability to just wiggle around people on the inside. That was a really, really crafty little move there because Sims was waiting, trying to draw the charge. Yeah, and while that was happening, Alvarado just got ready to check back into this ball game. Nice spin by Sims, and then he missed it as he turned away from Rodney Howard. Nice job by Howard just to maintain his position. And another nice job by Howard setting the screen, allowing DeVoe. That was the slowest fast break I've ever seen. But DeVoe <laughs> converts, and he's got eight points now. And then Brad Brownell, before his team even got over half court, was walking on the court to, to keep Jose Alvarado off the court because this is what he did against Virginia last time out. And in four of the last five games, for Georgia Tech, he has played all 40 minutes. Well, the only reason he didn't play all 40 minutes the first time these two teams met is because, as you said, he rolled that ankle. After the Brad Brownell timeout, oh, they hadn't turned it over in six minutes, but they gave it away there, and now Kyle started it on the drive in transition with two more for Tech getting out and running. That's really good body control by Sturdivant right there. Trap can't answer. It's a 6-0 run in the last minute or so for the Jackets. DeVos had a nice first half. Howard kept it alive. And Sims rescues it on the baseline. Great job by Sims to not throw that ball back in bounds until he was sure he was throwing it to his own guy. Usher blocks Honor on the drive at this end. That's twice now we've seen Usher block shots coming from behind. He doesn't panic when somebody beats him, but he tracks him and just swats it away. That is a really good play. He was actually trying to control that, but the ball slipped out of his hands. 
Georgia Tech's been very active defensively here in the first half. Sturdivant pushing again with Alvarado still on the sideline. Parham a deep one. Hunter Tyson the rebound. We talked about the fact that Clemson sometimes struggles offensively. And Mike, they haven't scored in three minutes. And shot it well from three the last couple of games. 18 combined threes the last two games, but just two of seven after that Chase Hunter miss from deep here in the first half. Well, an awful lot of it has to do with the guys who are shooting the threes. Georgia Tech's done a nice job making sure it's the low percentage guys who are hoisting most of the three-point attempts. Parham off the bounce, on the scoop, missed it. And Hemingway clears it for Clemson. Taking it himself to the basket, and a blocking foul is called on Tech to send Hemingway to the line on the other side. Georgia Tech leads by... A couple of things, they've blocked three shots already in the, here in the first half. And in addition to those three blocks, they have five steals. And so Georgia Tech, they've created some turnovers. They've scored points off the turnovers. And even though Moses Wright is on the bench with three personal fouls and Jose Alvarado went out with an injury, Georgia Tech maintains its lead and has actually stretched the lead out. But Alvarado, I just saw him get up off the bench. He's coming back in. The eagle eyes of Dan Bonner there. Alvarado had gotten up once earlier. We thought he was coming back in after. Looked like he might have gotten need at that end of the floor defensively. Right around the well, 6.30 took mark. The took a knee in the thigh. It was one of those knee-to-knee -knee things that, yeah. that can be very painful. And he looks like he's limping a little bit, Mike. Yeah, low Gimpy heading off to that corner as he lets Sturdivant handle it at the point for Georgia Tech. Howard had it knocked away. It stays with the Yellow Jackets. Well, I think Sturdivant surprised everybody that he didn't shoot that ball. He needed to just shoot it. One thing you don't want to do is throw it into trouble, and that's what he did. Georgia Tech fortunate to keep it. Alvarado wide right a bit, and it belongs to Clemson. Nick Honor looks like he jammed one of those fingers on his left hand. Fortunately, that's not his shooting hand. See, it's been a cold stretch offensively for Clemson. Really good man-to-man -man defense to this entire half by Georgia Tech. Dawes, too strong. Second chance for Clemson as Hunter pulls it out. Now, Dawes is one of the better three-point shooters, but that was a really, really tough shot. And now it's Sims. Working on Howard. He's done a nice job coming in for right, and he forced Sims into a miss. And all he did was maintain his ground and make Sims shoot a four-foot shot instead of a two-foot shot. DeVoe draws a foul. Hey, tonight, 10 Eastern, after the game, we'll have our next bald men not on campus. Jay Billis, LaFonso, Coach Seth Greenberg. They'll preview the ACC slate of weekend games and the latest news from around the conference only here on ACCN and the ESPN app. We've got four games tomorrow in the conference, including Duke at NC State and the North Carolina team that's been playing well recently at number nine, Virginia. That's two fouls now on Amir Sims. Got to be careful here that he doesn't pick up a foul with an offensive foul. He and Howard are battling pretty hard inside. Yeah, and Howard's someone, though he hasn't had consistent minutes throughout the year, he is not afraid of physicality in the post. And he commits a foul on Sims, backing him down. That's just, uh, you know, Howard picked up the foul right there, but you're, you're correct, Mike, in saying he's just trying to be physical mm -hmm. with Amir Sims 
because anytime there's that banging in there, Sims runs the risk of picking up an offensive foul. Sims with eight points, now nine so far to lead Clemson. The senior who was on the preseason all first team in the ACC had 18 and 11 last time out against Syracuse and reached a thousand points for his career. Splits at the line. Usher walks with it and a turnover for Georgia Tech. P.J. Hall, the freshman, enters for Clemson. Well, it's been five and a half minutes since Clemson scored a field goal. So they have to feel pretty fortunate. They're only down by eight points. Their defense is keeping them in it. Yeah, their last bucket was that Nick Honor elbow jumper. He's got it again here. And a push is called against Georgia Tech as Hall was going for the loose ball. And Hall obviously is in there for the last minute of the first half, so Sims doesn't pick up that foul. We Clemson's figured it'd be defense. a game like this. Yeah, when Number two Clemson the gets together, and... yeah. Get on the first for Hall. Hall doesn't get to the line very much, but he's a pretty good free throw shooter. Has now made six of his seven opportunities in conference play. Thanks, both. So a two possession is, game coming up on this final minute first half. And it's a really important final minute, I think, for each of these teams. Usher. Back iron. Good battle by Moore, but it's Dawes who secures it with 50 seconds to go. That is great patience by Dawes to not panic when he was triple teamed. We've got a feature on a couple of the biggest supporters of the Clemson program coming up at the half as Prosper drew some contact underneath the rim. Clemson hadn't been able to score from the field, but they're really attacking Georgia Tech, getting themselves to the free throw line. And here it's Omax Prosper. This guy is a, a turbo shot of energy when he comes into the ball game. Had nine points and five rebounds off the bench on Saturday against Syracuse as Hall exits and Jonathan Bear replaces him. Down to four. Clemson pushes the defense out to the full court. And Georgia Tech will take its use it or lose it time out here with about 22 seconds left in a first half that has been physical. It has had the good defense, Dan Bonner, that we would expect from both of these teams in a game that is crucial. A couple of top half of the ACC squads going at it here on this Friday night. And I think it's it's even more crucial for Georgia Tech because they had an opportunity during the week against Virginia and they lost that game for a big win. And now here they are playing Clemson. You can see Clemson a couple of spots above them in the ACC standings, but you pointed it out. Clemson, they're number 48 in the net. So if Georgia Tech could get this win, that would be one of those all important quad one wins. <laughs> you know, we used to talk all the time about the RPI and now we got the quads and it's just it gives you a headache sometimes trying to talk about what these teams are, how they're positioning themselves <laughs> for the NCAA tournament. I'll tell you what, that's a guy right there, Josh Pastner. He's locked in on all of that. He knows the permutations quite well. 
Well, he's he obviously not as intimidated it. by something that starts with algorithm as I am. But right. Of course, he coaches at the Georgia Institute of Technology, so he shouldn't be. Yeah, you did not go to the Institute as Alvarado missed it. Final six seconds. Dawes kept it he alive and had some ball. trouble with the handle. Dawes into the front court. Good if it goes. And he left it short to close out the first 20 minutes. It's a halftime lead for Georgia Tech on the road. Now well, fun first 20 minutes here at Little John Coliseum. 30 to 26 is the Yellow Jacket Lee CC Hoops with some Friday night action. Georgia Tech on the road here in South Carolina squaring off with Clemson. Well, there are so many folks around a college basketball program that make it go behind the scenes and all. And here's a story about two people you might not know who are. I know she's proud of me, whether I score a lot or I don't, or I play bad or I don't. Every time I get off the bus, I'm going to have like a smile from ear to ear. of his 1,000 points in his Clemson career. Let's give it up for Amir Sims. A very nice pregame presentation to Amir Sims, the senior. You saw the numbers, you heard the announcement, reaching 1,000 career points in an 18-point performance, a double-double that he had on Saturday against Syracuse and Dan Bonner he's a really impressive young man and and he's had quite the career here at Clemson well and you could see by those numbers that he has progressed as he has been here at Clemson and he has made himself one of the toughest matchups in the Atlantic Coast Conference and let's take a look at our first half stats it was an odd game Clemson cut a nine-point lead uh, without scoring <laughs> into a nine-point lead without scoring a field goal for the last <laughs> six minutes of the half so defense has been at a premium here and the Tigers they turned it over eight times early but they got control of the basketball there in the last seven or eight minutes of the half and that really helped them cut into that lead yeah because the lead was as large as nine for Georgia Tech and to your point Dan even though Clemson wasn't scoring you made this point as we went along in the first half they were attacking the rim and they did a lot of damage at the free throw line and then the protection in terms of ball security offensively it was about eight turnovers the first eight minutes and then they had just won the final 10 or 11 minutes there of that first half but keep in mind the last time these two teams played as we look at the three-point field goal numbers Look at Georgia Tech, they're one for eight. The last time they played, Georgia Tech was 16 of 27 shooting threes, and so Clemson's defense much better tonight. Moses Wright was in some foul trouble. He had three fouls in a one minute span in the first half, sat the rest of the first half on the bench. But Rodney Howard gave some good minutes. He was tasked with matching up with Amir Sims and Mike DeVoe with 10 points for Georgia Tech. And that's been important because Jose Alvarado, who was out for a few minutes when he got nicked up, he's been relatively quiet offensively in this game as well so far. Well, he has been, and it's very interesting. He's only one, he only has three points. One for five overall, one for four from beyond the arc. And he's got no assists in the game, so Jose Alvarado simply has not been a factor offensively. But Amir Sims for the Clemson Tigers has been a factor offensively. He leads the Tigers with nine points, and he made one three early, but he's operated fairly effectively on the inside despite some heavy pressure. Has one blocked shot, and uh, Clemson's defense is what has kept him in the game. This is early in the game when he made that three. So Michael he's DeVoe got nine got for Clemson, yeah, and then Dan on the other side, Mike DeVoe with 10 points, and he was aggressive early on, coming off a game in which he only scored two points against Virginia on Wednesday and shot one of 10 from the floor in that one. Yeah, but remember what we said before the game, that uh, Georgia Tech's success is really tied into both DeVoe and Jose Alvarado scoring in double figures. And
DeVoe was very successful early, as you mentioned, very aggressive, getting himself into the lane, creating some opportunities, making some tough shots. He cooled off toward the end of the half, but his defensive play was significant, too, as he got three steals in that first half, and that really helped get Georgia Tech going. Yeah, and he did not come off the floor either in that first half for Georgia Tech. They've got the lead at the break after the first 20 minutes from Little John Coliseum. It's Georgia Tech 30, Clemson 26. We've got the second half when we come back right after this. Jackets by four in meeting number 140 between these teams that have met going all the way back to the 1912-1913 season when John Heisman was coaching Georgia Tech. Of course, he had coached a couple of sports at Clemson before that. And now these teams locking horns here again in 2021. Dan Bonner, Mike Monica with you. Michael DeVoe, we told you, did not come off the floor in that first half. And he was really important for Georgia Tech in the first half because Jose Alvarado was quiet. Jose Alvarado was quiet. In fact, Michael DeVoe scored eight of those 10 points early in the game. And so for the most part, he was quiet throughout uh, the, set, the, first, the second half of the first half. And so Georgia Tech, very fortunate to be in the lead with right in foul trouble and Alvarado really not being a factor offensively. Alvarado back out there. So too is Moses Wright, five in the blue. He picked up his third foul at the 8.23 mark. And Bubba Parham starts the scoring coming out of halftime. And don't forget that Bubba Parham, when he was at VMI, he scored... 30 or more points nine times <laughs> so he's a guy that can put the ball in the basket yeah he hit a thousand points in two years there playing for vmi as amir sims just scored for clemson so he's into double figures with 11 and nobody else for the tigers has more than five knocked away and then a foul on georgia tech as sims was getting out to run with it and Georgia Tech sure hopes the foul is on DeVoe because the other guy who was there was Moses Wright. It is the first on DeVoe. This is really a nice job by Amir Sims just stepping in front of Moses Wright. And Moses Wright just cannot stand there and wait to receive the ball. He has to step toward the pass. If he does, then it's a foul on Sims. But because he just stands there, Sims is able to step in. And DeVoe is the guy who picks up the foul. They're getting the shot clock situated. 28 on the timer. A minute in here to the second half. Howard into the game with right on the bench for Georgia Tech. And a nice attack from Alamir Dawes. And what a finish. Well, Dawes did not start the game, but he has started the second half in place of Hemingway. And Alamir Dawes, when he is healthy, he has shown that he can not only shoot the three, but he can take the ball to the basket. And Howard picks up the third foul. And that's what we saw from Clemson toward the end of the half. They weren't making field goals, but they were very aggressively taking the ball to the basket, getting themselves to the line, and getting Georgia Tech in some foul trouble. So Dawes able to stamp the three-point play and trim the margin to one. Clemson trailed by as many as nine in the first half. Wright is back into the game. Usher from the corner for three. And Dan, you mentioned this. The first meeting, Georgia Tech hit 16 threes. That's just their second made three tonight. And Usher made five of them, and that five was a third of his total for the ACC season. Tyson got loose, back door on the baseline, and got it from Trap. You notice Moses Wright had to be very careful. Normally, he would make a heavier contest on that shot than he did, but he had to let it go because he's got those three fouls. Uh, Usher driving, and a blocking foul goes against Clemson. Oh, this was the Usher three, and then watch the top of your screen, top left. Look at the reaction from head coach Josh Passner here. Oh. 
He's probably hearing about it from his sideline. Well, he did some hopping around uh, out of the coach's box, but uh, I'm not sure that Jim Beheim could do that, but Josh Passon can. <laughs> he's got the shield. He's got the lanyard with the contact tracing chip in it. All decked out with his yellow jackets on the road as Usher missed both at the line. He's a 68% free throw shooter and came up empty. And now Dawes is trying to give Clemson the lead. That may have been a little deep, but it's a wide open three. I think Dawes has to take that. The problem is when you miss one like that early in the shot clock, generates a long rebound, and that allows DeVoe to get out and score and transition. And that's why, Dan, to your point, you hear so many coaches say that how our offense is doing, if we're making shots, it has a huge impact on our defense. Because if we are making shots, we can set things up a little more structured defensively. This time the three goes down as Clemson cuts it to one thanks to Clyde Trapp. Alvarado on the blow by and it rolled off the rim. Sims gave it up. Honor. Now Dawes on the drive and he's blocked by Usher. That's the third for Usher just like that one. And a backcourt violation. Josh Passner sheds the shield. He's furious with Moses Wright. He may have broken the shield because he took it off and he slammed it on the, uh, and he's got a technical and foul. Teddy Valentine just teed him up. And he may tee him up again. Josh better be careful, but Josh Passner got the technical foul because not only did he take the shield off, but he slammed it onto the table. Now those and things go be for $14.99 online, Dan. I mean, can, can we get him another one right now? Uh, that thing's mangled. Oh, it is mangled. And he's not upset with the referees. He's upset with his team. But that doesn't make any difference. And he did mangle it. You know, Usher, Usher got himself in... Look at the thing. <laughs> Usher got himself in trouble because he picked up his dribble in the lane and he was trying to get rid of the ball. He didn't want to get three seconds. And he, but he throws it to a guy in the backcourt. Moses Wright is in the backcourt. Now up at the top of your screen, Josh Passner takes off the face shield and slams it against the table. And Ted Valentine calls a technical, and that's what he's calling the technical for, for slamming that shield against the table. And that's a disadvantage of having that shield. He probably wouldn't have gotten in trouble if it was just a normal face mask. Only in 2021. <laughs> that was definitely a COVID technical right there. Hunter Tyson. Missed that one with Clemson again leading for the first time tonight. Usher, an offensive foul, and Georgia Tech is sensing this speed up on them as a team right now. That's now 10 turnovers for Georgia Tech, and this is Usher. He's trying to make up for that mistake that he made, and he's a pretty good jumper, but he's not jumping over top of Amir Sims. They've got nearly 1,900 in the building here as the call goes against Clemson. And so it's one of the venues in the ACC where there is a crowd as small as it may be compared to the normal 9,000 that you might get here. And they're starting to get into this thing in the first four minutes here of the second half. Now, it's very interesting. Their, their capacity is 1,876, and we ask, well, where did you come up with that number? And it's some sort of a state mandate. They are allowed to have 20.8% of capacity. Not 20%, not 21%, but 20.8% of capacity. Another figure that who would have seen in any year but this one. Fun first four minutes to the second half. Clemson leading now by one. One more time that 
got Josh Pastner the rare technical. He does not get a lot of those. Smash the shield. Now, of course, he's not happy with his team in that scenario, and you can see his surprise that he's getting teed up by Teddy Valentine. Well, I, I don't know what Ted Valentine's doing with the kicking motion. I didn't see Josh kick anything, but he sure destroyed that face shield. <laughs> Oh, man. And, you know, it, it, look at that thing. <laughs> I don't know that that's CDC approved anymore. <laughs> but it, it, with all of that going on, there's a couple things that have happened here. Amir Sims picked up his third foul, so he's on the bench right at the moment. So both Moses Wright and Amir Sims are, have three personal fouls in the game. Wright is still in there. Let's see if Clemson tries to attack inside. They do with honor. Nice body control off the window, driving on Alvarado. And again, it's that strength that honor possesses. It's just that physicality that enables to get him past Alvarado. Here's Michael DeVoe, and he turned it over, and honor comes away with it. Hemingway on the step through into the mid-range. And Wright secures it, Parham pushing. Nice job by Usher to tip that ball away from the Clemson players. Struggles continue from three-point range for Georgia Tech in this one. Now, I think Georgia Tech needs to do a better job taking the ball to the basket. DeVoe tried to do it that last time, but was out of control. I think they need to find Moses Wright in the low post and let him go to work. Tough turnaround for Tyson. Parham. Oh, he's been good in this one. Bubba Parham's up to nine points now, and a guy who only averages seven and a half per game. But as we said, he was a big scorer his first couple of college seasons at VMI, so he is somebody who's capable. That's just not his role on this team. Tyson's been active on the boards. That one squirted out to Hemingway. Into a lot of traffic, and DeVoe comes away with it. Alvarado has been throwing up a lot of threes so far in this one. And he has not been converting. Normally, you wouldn't mind Alvarado in transition. That's a good shot for him. Honor knocks it down, and Clemson's back in front. Nick Honor has been big in lead here early on in the second half, Dan. Well, a lot of it has to do with the types of shots they're getting. They're taking the ball close to the basket. You saw Sims operating in the low post, then a couple of drives. And when you're driving the ball, that causes the defense to collapse, which allows a guy like Nick Honor to get open. That's his first three-point attempt of the game. And Honor, he's four out of five shooting from the field. In his last game, he didn't get inside the arc. But today, he's only shot one and made one from outside the arc. Yeah, and he, he and Dawes have done Syracuse. some pretty good defensive work against Alvarado, although he's going to pick up a foul right there. Yeah, for his work on that end of the floor, he's helped keep Alvarado quiet. Just three points, one of seven shooting, one of five from three. And Alvarado without an assist as well. And now it's Dawes on him. DeVoe sinks that one and much needed for Georgia Tech and Michael DeVoe is up to 15. That was a really good pass by Moses Wright. An excellent control. Normally, you might see Wright attack the basket on that play, but he's got those three fouls, so he's got to be careful. Oh, boy, that was a break for Clemson right there. Hall wasn't looking for that pass. He's calling for it there from Prosper, going to work on Usher with the shot clock winding down on Clemson. Trapp's got to get it up, and Clyde Trapp and Clemson have a shot clock violation. 
Hey, tomorrow, 2 Eastern, it's Boston College and Syracuse. Second meeting between them this season. It was a Syracuse blowout win the first time at County Forum. Tomorrow at the Carrier Dome right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. There's the lob for right underneath. Nicely done by the Yellow Jackets. It's a really good play. And again, Sims has those three personal fouls, so he's got to be a little bit careful. But really good movement by Moses Wright and a nice catch inside. Moses Wright does a nice job cutting to the top of the key, and then he gets position. It's almost like he's under the basket trying to rebound. He gets position, and this is a really nice job by DeVoe to see that he's got that position, and Nick Honor just didn't get over quickly enough. Well, Dan, for as much as we were talking about Moses Wright and Amir Sims, and I know you were curious to see how that matchup was going to play out, it has shape-shifted a little bit here because both guys have been dealing with foul trouble, Wright and Sims with three each, so it's a little bit of a cat-and-mouse game between them as well. That time, the problem for Clemson was they did not have enough pressure on, De on the ball. DeVoe was able to stand there and look over the entire court and he could see that Wright had great position. Got to get more pressure on the ball than that. Alvarado's up on the ball here as Sims set the screen. Honor kicks it, trap points it, and hits it. DeVoe back the other way, drew a foul. Uh, it goes on Alamir Dawes. I think the strategy for each of these teams has to be pretty similar. I think they need to attack. You can't settle for outside jump shots. DeVoe not settling there. Got into the mid-range but missed it. Tipped around. Sims dribbled it off the leg of honor. Now a tie-up and a held ball with the arrow pointing to Clemson. Well, Clemson has started in eight days, as you see here, all part of five games in 12 days. As you look at the road ahead, this is going to have a, a game on Sunday as well. Georgia Tech will be back home right here on ACCN against Pitt. And so at the start of the week, Josh Pastner, before practice on Monday, he showed his team two videos. One was Kobe Bryant, one was Tom Brady, and they were both talking about how much time those guys spent on treatment and recovery because it's a lot of games in a compressed window here for Tech. And they're not easy games <laughs> either. And that's that. Now, Clemson is really starting to heat up from three. And that was the first time in the second half we haven't seen him go inside and kick it back out for the three. You know, you're talking about their games. They play against Virginia, one of the best defensive teams in the country, against Clemson, another one of the best defensive teams in the country, and then Pitt, one of the most physical teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And yeah, they've played a really challenging conference slate so far. Shot clock winding down on Michael DeVoe and a long two to trim the margin to one. That is a big, big basket for Georgia Tech. Now they have to dig in here on the defensive end. Clemson shooting over 60% from the field in the second half because they're getting better shots than they did in the first half. And look at the ball pressure from Alvarado up on Nick Honor. Sims jockeying with right and Sims scoring over the top in an excellent post matchup between those two. It's hard to bring pressure to bring a double team because he's such a good passer, but I think I would rather have Clemson shooting it from outside than Sims operating that close to the basket. Parham answers right back with honor up on him. Not bad defense there. That's just a kid who can score. And another great pass by DeVoe. Getting the ball inside, kicking it back outside. So at this end of the floor, Dan, whether it's by the dribble drive or when Sims gets it on the block, that has opened up some of the kick-out threes, it seems like, for Clemson. Yes, absolutely. 
That one was from the perimeter. And a miss for Clemson. Parham can't give Georgia Tech the lead, but Usher skies on the glass. Now Alvarado hoist. And the rebound Boy. to Trap. Alvarado just doesn't have it so far tonight. He's now one for six from beyond the three-point arc, and you don't often see him miss a wide-open one like that. And remember the number that we showed right at the top talking about the Georgia Tech guards. Dan, this caught your eye that when Alvarado and DeVoe are both scoring in double figures, Georgia Tech's been winning in ACC games, and when it's only one of them that's scoring in double figures, it just hasn't gone as well for Georgia Tech in conference play. Yeah, it's 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 a you know Josh Pastner told us that he his guards have to play well And there just isn't any question that he's correct and the, the numbers prove it The only time that they were able to win was that first game against Clemson when DeVoe had the big game and Alvarado had eight Dawes missed it prosper tried to follow it That's really good pressure by DeVoe On the inside DeVoe's got 17 as well, and Josh Pastner said to us this morning, he's got to be a stud for us today. Parham couldn't connect with Moses Wright, and a Tech turnover. Sunday afternoon, a doubleheader of women's basketball here on ACCN in the app. Wake Forest and Clemson. Wake is coming off a huge win yesterday, and as NCAA tournament hopes, Miami and Florida State will follow that to Eastern. Again, ACCN and the app as well. So 51 all is the score with eight and a half to go in this second half from Little John Coliseum. Good hands from DeVoe again for Georgia Tech. On the run out, it's DeVoe laying it in. That is a tremendous job by Jose Alvarado to basically just get in the way and set a screen <laughs> for DeVoe. The defense couldn't get to him because they couldn't get past Alvarado. All set up by a career-high fifth steal for DeVoe. A great kick out from Dawes to find Sims. How fun has this one been? DeVoe. Right on the offensive glass, and then it kicked off the leg of Sims, and a tie-up with the arrow favoring Georgia Tech to keep it at this end of the floor. Well, we just keep going back out from deep last week, and a couple of wins to get back on track, and they've got five threes, Dan, here in the second half. Well, and the way they've done it in the second half, for the most part, has been drive the ball in, force the defense to collapse, and then knock it down. And as you mentioned, they were only two for nine in the first half, but five out of seven in the second half has really improved things for the Clemson Tigers. And Georgia Tech, they're a little bit better in this half than they were in the first half, but they're nowhere near on the 16 for 27 pace they set the first time these two teams play. Boy, every pass. Baseline out of bounds, every possession so contested. Honor took it away. Trap on the scoop, no. And here comes Alvarado. In attack mode. And Bear got a piece of it. A frenetic pace to this one as Dawes saved it. Parham spins out of trouble. And it belongs to Georgia Tech. How's that for frantic? Well, frantic's the word for it. Efficiency is not a word you could throw in there, but <laughs> frantic certainly works. Now, each of these teams playing with a tremendous amount of intensity. Jose Alvarado made a really good defensive play on the one end, and then Bear made another good defensive play against Alvarado on the other. Two teams in the top half of the ACC for Georgia Tech searching for a quad one win. Clemson trying to build on the Carolina and Q's wins last week. Here's Alvarado knocking it down and finally maybe starting to heat up. Had been one of six from deep before that. 
Well, you, you know he's just not going to miss very many of those wide open threes. Excellent job by Parham to make the one extra pass. And for as much as we've talked about Michael DeVoe, Bubba Parham has played really well in this one. He's got a dozen. First time in double figures since a week before Christmas. Shot clock winding down. This is Sims going against Wright. Falling away, no. Offensive rebound for Jonathan Bear. Giving some good minutes off the bench here. Georgia Tech, we've mentioned they've struggled from three, but when you get ball movement like this, and this is the second or third time that Jose Alvarado's been wide open for that three, and he's just not going to miss very many of those, and he knocked that one down. Jonathan Bear, good on the first, the fifth-year senior. Part of the very deep Clemson team that's been well documented throughout the year as John Newman the third checks back in Well, that depth has had an effect in this game Clemson's bench has outscored Georgia Tech's bench 18 now 19 to 2 And some fresh legs to apply the full-length pressure on Alvarado and the Jackets Usher driving on Bear. Got it to go, plus the foul for Jordan Usher. Boy, Usher is a guy, sometimes he takes that ball, he drives it into the lane, you're thinking, oh no, what's going to happen? But here he makes a fantastic move. And how many times have we seen this from Jordan Usher? He is a guy who can take contact, he can score with either hand inside. He Once he gets close to the basket, he's capable of some acrobatics around the goal. That is a heck of a big play. Really is for Jordan Usher, the senior from Canton, Georgia. He's into double figures as well, joining Parham with a dozen. And it's Georgia Tech by three. Sims ties the ball game. And keep in mind, in ACC play, Sims came into this game shooting 26% from beyond the arc. Yeah, maybe not as well as he had shot it from deep last year. Right over the top of Bear. Look out below. And then Georgia Tech takes a quick timeout after the right flush. Well, I've been talking about Wright and Sims the entire game, and Sims knocks it down his third three of the game. But then Moses Wright is wide open on the inside, and he just powers that ball past Bear. Yeah, that's very optimistic on Bear's part to think he's going to block <laughs> a Moses Wright dunk. Um, these are the heavy minutes that we talked about and that you were just mentioning, Dan for as deep as Clemson is and how they come at you with the platoons. Georgia Tech, it is a very constricted bench for Josh Passner, and he will ride his aces. Well, that th those minutes played by the starters, that is Bobby Kremens-esque. Yeah, Bobby Kremens, great teams at Georgia Tech. They never played more than six or seven guys. We saw some Kyle Sturdivant and Khalid Moore in the first half. Rodney Howard's given some good minutes, and now the pressure of Alvarado forces a Nick Honor turnover about 93 feet away from the basket. Well, that's just Alvarado being Alvarado. He's extremely <laughs> aggressive. That's what Brad Brownell was saying to us this morning. He just gets right up under you, and he is always slapping down on the ball. He's got such great hands. You're joining us late in this one. Alvarado, three steals per game. We showed you earlier. Third best in the country. Came into this one with 200 steals for his career. Parham, no. And it's Clemson basketball down by two with about four and a half left. That's really good defense 
by Clemson. I know we've talked about Alvarado and his defensive effort against Honor, but Nick Honor has also had a very good defensive game against Jose Alvarado. He uses that physical strength. He's got about 25 pounds on Alvarado, and I think he's used that effectively throughout the game. He threw the post entry this time for Sims. He's been battling with Wright, took the contact, draws a foul, and will shoot a pair. And that's, and that's foul four number fouls four on Moses, Moses Wright. Wright. Well, that's just one of those things you keep going in there, and eventually Wright's going to get that foul. Sims is just too good a player on the inside. Sims an 84% free throw shooter. Hey, nothing but net every Sunday is our weekly basketball studio show. We'll preview the week, and we will look back at this game. Four games tomorrow, two games on Sunday. Nothing but net, 8 Eastern, ACCN in the app. Sims good on both. We're tied at 61. And Clemson has done a great job from the free throw line tonight. They've made all seven in the second half. They're 15 of 16 for the game. And here Clemson showing a zone. No, it's man to man. And Wright scores over Bear. Drew the foul as well. Now again, there Bear is trying to defend against Wright because Sims has some foul trouble. And this is just a great job. Nobody comes to help. And Moses Wright, if you're going to give him that much time that close to the basket, he's going to score some points. And that was not an easy shot. It wasn't like he was in the low post. Bear did a nice job keeping him about eight feet away from the basket, but Moses Wright showing the kind of skill he possesses. And that's just a giveaway by DeVoe right there, that foul. That's his second foul, and it sends us to a timeout. 3.56 to go. This has been a heck of a second half. Coliseum. This is a game that was supposed to be played tomorrow, but because Georgia Tech is trying to squeeze in as many games as it can and will play now on Sunday against Pitt, this game moves up to Friday, and Dan Bonner, this has delivered, especially here in the second half. We've had six ties, ten lead changes in this half alone, and a three-point game in the final four minutes here of regulation. And the interesting thing about this is, is you see Jose Alvarado coming out of the huddle there. Alvarado has not had a good offensive game. Only two for ten shooting the basketball. But none of that matters right now. Alvarado, one of the top players in the league. And if he can deliver in the last three minutes and 56 seconds, that's all that they need. He doesn't have to make all the plays. He just has to make the big plays. And he certainly has the facility for doing that. There's a foul on DeVoe before the break. So the one and one here for Jonathan Bear. 17 of 21 before that make to earn another. For the 24-year-old from Germany, getting some run here down the stretch. And that, I don't know what DeVoe was trying to accomplish out there, but that was, that was a foul where you basically send a really good free throw shooter to the line. That's like a turnover. And after a couple of makes, it allows Clemson to pick up full length against Alvarado with Dawes shoot. on him. It's been excellent for the Tigers. DeVoe has led the way with 19. Now Usher into a long two that was too strong and Trapp clears it. Clemson is a team. They're not afraid to turn it over to their defense. Their defense did a great job that time. Keep in mind, Moses Wright has four personal fouls. He came up on honor. Dawes blew a tire. Parham diving for it. And, and Parham's gonna pick Parham's up a foul. gonna get hit with the foul, yeah, and that's his fourth. You can't just jump on top of a guy. This isn't football, you're not trying to recover a fumble. See, he, he jumps right on top of him, <laughs> and that, that is the correct call. You're not allowed to do that. Dogs looked like he was trying to shake out his arm there. He's a 79% free throw shooter for his career. <coughs> Misses on the front end.
So it's interesting now, Georgia Tech with two guys, Wright and Parham, with four personal fouls. Both of them can be fairly aggressive on the offensive end. You don't want to pick up your fifth foul with a charge. Here's Wright, and he gets the roll over Sims. Now, Sims was in pretty good position. That's just a great job by Moses Wright forcing his way to the basket. And boy, Moses Wright has come alive here down the stretch for Georgia Tech. Great entry from Bear to Sims to cut it to one. Now that's a place where they have an advantage because Moses Wright simply cannot afford to be aggressive on the defensive end. That's a great catch on the inside by Sims. And how about the fire from the senior? Shot clock below 10, and Trapp commits a foul on DeVoe. And so DeVoe will go to the free throw line for the one and one. He's a 70% free throw shooter. Well, we've been talking about the guard play for Georgia Tech. That's how we came on the air tonight. DeVoe has carried the load scoring-wise with 19, while Al Alvarado with six points on two of 10 shooting. And that has generally not been a formula for success. As we mentioned for Georgia Tech, Alvarado having a very poor shooting night. DeVoe makes both. So it's 68-65. Clemson down by three with the basketball with less than two to go in regulation here at home. High-low. This time it's Sims to bear with the finish. That's really a nice pass by Sims, and we talked about the fact that he's a really good passer. Bear at six feet ten going up against Michael DeVoe. Five-inch height advantage for Bear. They work to perfection. Parham saved it at the midline. That is some kind of play by Parham. And now Parham cannot hit from three. Let's see if they try to go to Sims. He's been terrific. 23 points. Found honor. And he's blocked. Moses <laughs> Wright came to get it. Now, Moses Wright, uh, you know, he again, he has those four personal fouls. This is an excellent pass inside. Alvarado getting over just a little too late to help. This time, Alvarado does a nice job forcing Honor to stop. And I think that was actually DeVoe that came over and swatted at that as well. And Wright for sure gets it this time on Sims. Wright moves his feet, controls his body. This is the spot where Alvarado normally makes a play. He got free underneath from DeVoe, right on cue. Timeout, Clemson. Now you said it, Dan, Jose Alvarado darting to the block. But just nobody looking at him. Nobody's watching him. Honor is guarding somebody. That means a passer, but it's not. It's somebody who makes plays. And that time it was a scoring play, finding the open spot, realized nobody was looking at him and just cut to the basket. It was his teammate, Jordan Usher, who said earlier this week, Jose would cut off his fingers to help us win a game. That's what Georgia Tech's trying to do here on the road. Clemson, meanwhile, down by three, still 33 seconds to go. Everything seems to have gone through Sims here these last few minutes, Dan, offensively for the Tigers. Well, the Tigers are six of eight shooting threes here in the second half, but you don't need a three-point basket. If you get one doing it the way they've been doing it, driving the ball, forcing the defense to collapse, and kicking out for a three, we are certainly going to take an open three, but you still have time in the game to get the ball inside, particularly to attack inside with the Amir Sims. Sims off the bounce, got some space and got the roll. Maybe carved out some real estate on Moses Wright. 
And Georgia Tech will use its final timeout trying to inbound it with about 29 seconds to go here in regulation. Well, it was Amir Sims, and he has matched a career high tonight with 25 points in this one. Gives you the idea of the kind of versatility of Amir Sims. They don't try to get him the ball on the block. They get him the ball out on the wing, and he's able to drive the ball to the goal. You're right, he did push off there a little bit, but the official's rule wasn't enough to call a foul. The problem now for Clemson is the shot clock is off. Georgia Tech, they do not have to shoot the ball again if they can hang on to it. Of course, they've got to get the ball over midcourt. So if you can get, get them into a 10-second violation, then that's one way you can get the ball. You go for the steal. And, I, you know, you just don't have a lot of time to play around here. If you don't get a steal immediately, I think you have to extend the game. And Georgia Tech, you know, that's pretty tough. The worst free throw shooter tonight has been Usher. He's only one for three. He's the only guy for Georgia Tech who has missed a free throw. And you mentioned he only shoots about 67%. So maybe early in the shot clock, if Usher gets the ball, you want to give him a chance at the free throw line if you're the Clemson Tigers. Because you see, Georgia Tech as a team has shot it really well tonight. And for the season, they're 72% at the line. That's middle of the pack in the ACC. But you're right, it's Usher right around 67%. Moses Wright, 68%. Those are the two worst Georgia Tech free throw shooters on the floor right now. With 29 seconds left. And Usher to put it in. Ahead to Alvarado. He's an 88% free throw shooter. And about 10 seconds come off the clock. And Michael DeVoe, a 70% free throw shooter, will go to the line. It's a nice job by Georgia Tech getting the ball in bounds, first of all, and then putting it in the hands of Alvarado, who they didn't want to foul. And so they're able to run 10 seconds off the clock. One and Still one, one here. And one, though. Yep. Ninth team foul on Clemson. And DeVoe earns another. How big has he been tonight? Big time bounce back performance for the junior from Orlando, who only had two points on one of ten shooting in the eight point loss to Virginia on Wednesday. Clemson will take its final timeout and will have 15 seconds left with which to work trailing by three. Uh, this has lived up to the hype so far. A couple of teams in the top half of the ACC. Georgia Tech at five and five in conference action, but in search of what would be its first ACC road win of the season, this would qualify as a quad one victory. And Clemson, meanwhile, after dropping four out of five coming off the COVID pause, had a great week last week and has been off since a win against Syracuse on Saturday as we reset things here in the final 15 seconds. Well, I think now, if you're Clemson, you really do have to think about getting a three-point play. That means a three-point basket or driving the ball to the goal and seeing if you can score and get fouled. And Georgia Tech... You see, <laughs> they don't have a lot of, there's not a lot of breathing space here after this one. But for Clemson, they've got the nine team fouls. So the next foul you commit, it's going to be two shots for Georgia Tech anyway. So I think you got to try to get three here. Sims had a look at it. Got it down low to Bear. So they cut it to one and used only three and a half seconds. And no timeouts. Now what? Parham went down hard. It's been a physical second half in particular. Sims taking the ball to the basket, electing to pass up the three. I thought he might have had an, open, an opening from three-point range. One-point game, Georgia Tech in front, trying to inbound it without a timeout left. Usher threw it to midcourt. Wright got it to Alvarado, who slams on the brakes. 
and will go to shoot two at the line. Boy, they barely got it in in time. Nice job by Clemson. Now, Moses Wright playing around with that mid-court line, but it's not a backcourt violation unless both feet and the ball are across the line. And that was not the case there. But here, missing the first free throw, this gives Clemson a chance. 88% free throw shooter, Jose Alvarado. Misses, oh, misses both. both. No, no timeouts. timeouts. Clemson down by one. This is Nick Honor for the win. Oh! Well, Alvarado misses it, and so that gives Clemson a chance. And Honor, this is a really good screen by Sims. Alvarado never sees it. And that's a situation where you can't be playing that far off of Sims. You've got to get up because the only chance <laughs> is to shoot that long one, and he banks it in. Our Zaxby's player of the game, Honor was the hero. Sims was the star throughout, matching a career high with 25 points. And what a night for this Clemson team. We talked about the guards right at the top, Dan, and we sung the praises of DeVoe and Alvarado. And we mentioned Nick Honor as well, who's now had some big moments in this first year playing for Clemson. Remember the NC State game? He had some huge plays down the stretch, and he's the hero tonight. A great screen, as we said, by Amir Sims, and obviously that's a little bit of luck, that ball banking in, but Honor made both of his three-point shot attempts tonight. Very, very disappointing loss for Georgia Tech. Alvarado misses those two free throws, and then to have it banked in from three, Alvarado never saw that screen coming. Final score, 74-72. Coming up next, it's Bald Men on Campus. For Dan Bonner, our producer, Everett Hutto, director, Kurt Sutton, and our entire crew, Mike Monaco, saying so long.